Screwball82, um, I have only just done a an Insidious review, but where I've been off for a little while, I thought I'd catch up and uh, uh, get a bit more frequent with the vi frequent with the videos. Um, and I'm going. To, it, I was going to do a, a completely different video, um, and I got a request <laughs> to do something, um, which sort of surprised me. Uh, but I'm more than happy to do it. Um, uh, this is uh, a quick review of Fearless, which is a 1993 film. Um, there are other movies under the name, but th I'm going to be reviewing the uh, the 93 Peter Weir film with Jeff Bridges. Um, I'll start by saying uh, this is a film that is very, very t tough to get hold of, uh, which is all the more reason to try and push it out there. Um, it's one of those strange things that kind of got overlooked and then forgotten, and yet when it came out, my understanding is that it actually got a lot of, you know, a, a really, really good reception. Since 93, it just sort of, it, it seemed to quickly die. And even now, when uh, Peter Weir's films come out, or when they have a, a talk with the guy, um, this is one that doesn't, doesn't really get mentioned. Most people don't know Peter Weir as a director. Uh, he's... He's one of those names that, um, he's not like Spielberg, or Hitchcock, or Scorsese, or, you know, he's not a name that you say and people go, oh, rush to see the new Peter Weir film. Um, but when you look at his catalogue, he just, he does what he does, and he does it really well, and Fearless is currently my second favourite film of all time, ever, and I watch a lot of movies, um... On IMDb, it only got 7 out of 10 as an average. Most people just see it as an average kind of movie. and uh, and yeah, But there are some of us, um, and I've read the comments on YouTube clips, and I, I know that I'm not the only one, who thinks that this, is, this film is something really special. Jeff Bridges plays Max Klein, um, who is a survivor of a plane crash. Um, Rosie Perez uh, plays Carla Rodrigo, I think the name, um, who is a woman who also survived the crash. Her child did not. Um, the story is really just, it, it's kind of a simple one uh, on the surface of about uh, this, this guy Max. Um, having survived the plane and having led a, a group of survivors away from it, having come out without a scratch, um, seems to have cheated death in his own mind. And uh, I, when I was, I remember when I was younger and it was on TV, the way the film was sort of explained to me is, oh, he thinks he's invincible, and I sort of took it to mean it's sort of a weird. Uh, don't know how to describe it, but I, I, I took that literally. He doesn't think he's invincible. Um, in reality, what the film is really about is, is that syndrome that survivors of really, really bad a accidents are known to suffer. Um, that that issue of you've walked away from something that really you feel you shouldn't have, and it leaves you in this kind of very strange place of being alive but not feeling it. Um, I mean, I don't think it's something that anybody who hasn't been there really understands, but I think the film has a very uh, good... It, it puts that on screen as best it can, and I think Peter Weir does really, really well. Looking back on this film... Uh, you see a couple of faces, namely John Turturro and uh, Benicio Del Toro um, in early roles. And uh, Turturro is this, uh, th th I think it's a sort of, uh, he's, a, he's a psychiatric, he's he's charged with um, leading the survivor group and, uh, you know, helping them. And Max, in a completely non-sanctimonious way, just doesn't, have any interest. Um, instead, he makes friends with 
the mother, uh, Rosie Perez's character, the husband of whom is played by Benicio del Toro. And there's this um, one side of the story involving uh, the husband, the, the loss of the child, and who is to blame for that. And there's this kind of really sort of almost almost kind of creepy side of it where uh, he's sort of trying to get compensation effectively for his, his child's life lost in the plane crash. Um, in the, and at the same time completely missing and not understanding uh, his wife's pain and, and guilt over it. Um, and it's not, well, it's not so much he misses it, he just simply doesn't get it. And nobody does. Um, in Max, she finds, in time, she finds somebody who is on the same page. And vice versa. And they live in this, for a while, they, they live in this bubble. And what the film does is just look at that survivor syndrome, um you know, story, how it affects them, how it affects the people around them. And as I say, in that sense, it's a very simple story. You can kind of see where the, where the idea is going. Um, to explain all the subtext of Fearless, you know, all the symbolism and the, the, the layers of the, of the allegory that's going on, um, I mean, that would be an essay in itself, but uh, it's safe to say that, you know, this film sends you away reeling and really thinking about and talking about you know with anyone who who you can get talking about it if you see it with anyone um it really gets you talking for a long time and it, and and having those really sort of deep conversations about life and that sounds really sort of hammy and melodramatic but when you see the film that it it, it makes sense um as i said it, it received standing ovations when it first premiered i believe and um, I can see why. I still maintain that the final ten minutes of the film is is the most powerful uh, the most powerful cinema I've ever seen, um, and it remains unsurpassed. Um, I re and I'm again I'm not the only one uh, on comments. You don't have to look far on comments uh, on clips of it on YouTube. Um, I wouldn't recommend watching the film on YouTube, nor should you watch the ending on YouTube. Please don't do that. Actually, try to see the film. But you do um, do not have to look far to find other people agreeing. And uh, to quote somebody else, they said, you know, I always tell people from the moment that he bites the strawberry at the end of the film, just just strap in and uh, enjoy it because it, the next sort of ten minutes is impeccable. Yeah, it's so good. Um... It's not least down to Jeff Bridges, who I've always maintained and still maintain is, you know, one of the greatest actors. Um, he nails it, and there's something about the finale that moves me to tears every time, and it is without fail. Um, trying to explain it is tough, um, because the whole thing sort of speaks to something fundamental in us. Um, it's truly life affirming, and it's something that you don't want to sort of put into words. I, I couldn't begin to. Um, it's a piece. It's a film that proves, especially the finale, certainly proves that when everything meshes together, when image and sound and music and performance and the idea all tie in so perfectly and beautifully uh, cinema can convey something that nothing else on its own can no book can I think Tarantino once talked about this you know no no matter how much you love a book how much you love a play how much you love a piece of music um, the beauty of cinema is it pulls it all together for you and um, can do things that no other one individually can can do quite so powerfully. 
this is a bit of an all over the place review. I hadn't planned it. Like I say, it was a it was a it was an, a request. So um, the, the synopsis doesn't really need much more than what I've said. I mean, that is the basic, you know, plain survivor uh, with um, this sort of survivor syndrome uh, makes friends with a mother who lost her child, and it's about their relationship and uh, how it affects the people around them. But from there, what the film becomes about, and the layers of, of ideas, um, I could be here until, you know, Kingdom Come, breaking it apart, and actually giving my thoughts on it, but it's not a movie that you give too much of your opinion on, I think, uh, the only, the real reason I'm doing this review is that I really feel it's a movie that more people should see, and it is tough to get hold of, it really is, my copy, <laughs> uh, of it, um, was imported and I think that's the case I think you need to if you're in the UK you actually need to now um, but it's worth it it's worth seeing Peter Weir is actually one of my favourite filmmakers this is my favourite film by him and as I say it is my second favourite film of all time uh, maybe one day that will change but I don't foresee a time that this movie would ever be out of my top 10 a film you know top 10 films ever made it really is i think that good try and get it try and catch it and um come back and let me know you know leave a leave a comment i'd love to discuss it with more people who see it because it's a movie that like his future work such as um the truman show um he can sort of really start conversations and uh it's a film that has that quality and everybody's perfect. Everyone is perfect. It's that there is not a weak link from director down to, you know, production design. To, it's just phenomenal. And as I say, I can't stress again. I can't stress enough. The final scene. Um, it's recognised as I think, without spoiling anything. It's it's recognised as one of the greatest um, scenes in that setting ever done. And, um, actually, it's not to spoil anything, you know it's about a plane crash, that the final scene, uh, involves, um, involves that, is it involves the crash of the plane. Uh, there's more to it than that, but to say more would be to sort of spoil the impact of, of how it all comes together. See this movie, Fearless, 1993, um, if you can. And if you're a film lover and you haven't, if you're, you know, if you're a cinema fan um, and you haven't seen this movie, whatever your age, whether you've heard of it or not, I really, not even joking about it, I, I really recommend it very highly, 10 out of 10, um, please see this film uh, because it might just change your outlook on life and... Uh, that, you know, people say stuff like that flippantly, but in this case, I'm completely serious about it. It's a beautiful, stunning film uh, with such deep meaning and such deep subtext and such beautiful imagery and performances and just classic, you know, goosebump scenes. You know, those scenes where you just, oh my God, you know, I can't believe how good this is. Um specifically that final scene and another scene uh, one of the more famous moments from the film um, that always stuck in my memory from when I saw it a long long time ago was a scene in a car and the soundtrack involves you too and that's as much as I'll say but um, when you see it I'm not even exaggerating I think I've said enough uh, that's for, for, the, for the person who requested it requested it I don't know if that's what you're after but that's my take on Fearless and um, thanks for watching another review on the way bye bye